Ultimately, Qian Bu Zhong is doing philosophy using heaven, earth and man. It deals with the more abstract overview regarding the creation of heaven, earth and man and its principles of change, while Samuel Shingo deals more concretely with the specifics of how the three should be properly established. Even in China, there is no text that elaborates on the philosophical principles of numbers in such a sophisticated manner. They have texts like Huang Di Neijing, Lie Zi Zhuang Zi and I Qing, but all these merely contain only small aspects of Qian Bu Gyeong's broader philosophy of numbers. There is no other text where the whole big picture appears, except in Qian Bu Gyeong. This is truly a remarkable point. This zero represents Mugok. But from here, a focal point emerges. When a focal point emerges from Mugok, we call this point Teguk. Now this drawing can be understood in two different ways. Firstly, it can show how Muguk gathered its energy into a single point. From the ocean of Muguk emerged the wave called Teguk. In this explanation, Muguk is the essence and Teguk is the function. For the universe to start, there must exist a cosmic egg. Teguk is just another name for this cosmic egg. However, another way to understand this drawing is that since this Teguk point ultimately represents the seed of the universe, this outer circle can represent the universe itself, or the phenomenal world. So we can call this the origin of all phenomena, or we can also call this the focal point of Muguk. Both explanations are possible, and in Chinese Taoist texts, they actually explain it in both ways. Anyways, this Teguk is one, and Muguk is zero. But for Huangguk, we only call it Huangguk when it manages at least the four cardinal directions. So Huangguk is five, one, two, three, four, and five. You can see this in our Joseon era coins. Heaven is a circle and earth is a rectangle. So if heaven takes up the number three, then earth takes up the number two. It's because earth is within heaven, as you can see. And earth is represented by a rectangle. As for man, man is represented by a triangle. A single head is lifted up while the two feet are below. Conversely, this has its feet lifted up with a single head towards the ground. So it's plants and these two triangles with their head pointed sideways represent animals. This is how we draw the entirety of heaven, earth and all its living creatures into a single drawing, with this most crucial center representing Teguk. Heaven emerges from Teguk, earth emerges from Teguk, and all the various life forms emerge from Teguk. We can explain the entirety of Eastern philosophy, including all of Cheonbu Gyeong, with just this single drawing. Thus, these are the three Cheonbu seals, circle, rectangle and triangle. The universe is merely the oscillation of yin and yang. As yang increases, spring and summer come. As yin increases, fall and winter come. Spring, summer, fall, winter. It's an endless cycle. So in our Korean flag, the Teguk Gi, we've drawn the endlessly cycling yin and yang into a single circle. Therefore, our flag's Teguk represents the number one, where yin and yang are undivided. If they were divided, that would already be the phenomenal world. However, Teguk is the common root of yin and yang before their division. In this diagram, yin and yang are cycling back and forth. But what if yin and yang were unified and compressed into one? Then this center line would be Teguk. Teguk is the place where yin and yang are embraced as one. It's when Teguk vibrates that yin and yang are created. So when we say yin and yang, it implies it's already divided into two. But the one that pierces both yin and yang is what we call Teguk. In other words, the Teguk in our Teguk Gi is in a state of encapsulating yin and yang within itself. That's why our Teguk Gi isn't a yin yang flag. If it was separated and was vibrating, then it would be a yin yang flag. However, since it is referring to a single seed where yin and yang are encapsulated as one, it is called the Teguk Gi. Then what is Huang Guk? Given that yin and yang are already vibrating, if Teguk is the formless origin of yin and yang, then Huang Guk is the force that maintains its balance between the four cardinal directions, regardless of if the circumstances are yin or yang. So the way Huang Guk operates is that when it's hot, it maintains its center while hot, and when it's cold, it maintains its center while cold. Thus, the force which maintains its balance is what we refer to as Huang Guk. They're all exactly the same spot, only that when it's completely empty, we call it Muguk. When it's the origin of the universe, we call it Teguk. And when it manages the universe, we call it Huangguk. All three are all referring to the same spot. But if we must distinguish them, the relationship between the three is that the function of Muguk is Teguk, and the function of Teguk is Huangguk. It all starts with emptiness. The universe in its purest form is just completely empty. 
However, from this void, the universe is created. So when that emptiness is serving the role of creation, it is called teguk. Furthermore, when it's serving the role of managing the universe, we use the Huang character, which means emperor. Huangguk is the apex as an emperor, Teguk is the apex as a creator, and Muguk is the apex which can't even be called an apex. It's all just referring to the same spot, however. The difference is that their energy becomes slightly altered. Muguk is when it's in its purest energy state. But for Teguk, there is already a distinction between yin and yang, while also being unified as one within itself. This Teguk is quite peculiar, isn't it? Just picture our Teguk Gi. The yin and yang are clearly distinguished, and yet it is encapsulated into one. As for Huang Guk, regardless of if it's yin or yang, it always manages the circumstances accordingly. Look at this. This part expands while the other part contracts, creating a finger. With exceptional precision, the universe gives the command for this part to expand and for this part to contract. So whether it be a single finger or anything in the universe, it is all created through the balance of yin and yang. It's incredible. It's not like there's some place that orders all these commands. I mean, we casually say that it's because of our DNA. But how exactly our DNA commands all of this is not so obvious. The realm of the formless continuously gives commands and creates the realm of form with meticulous orderliness for us. Therefore, if we take a certain cell and place it somewhere else in the body, it immediately participates in that new arena to create that other body part. In other words, even if we switch up the locations of our cells, the cells listen to the commands for that specific region. When you consider stuff like this, doesn't it become quite remarkable? This philosophy is just dealing with the way life forms exist using numbers. Although I said the content is a bit abstract, it's not anything that's unrelated to the everyday world we know. Rather, these principles were extracted from that reality. So another name for these principles that are universally found in reality is the universe's source code. This is equivalent to the Logos. It's better to research three-dimensionally when we get to the number six. For the y-axis, this side is plus and this side is minus. For the z-axis, this side is plus and this side is minus. And for the x-axis, this side is plus and this side is minus. Now let's view the y-axis as the axis for heaven. Above and below are key for heaven. As for earth, east and west are key, so earth becomes the x-axis. And lastly, moving from past to present to future, man continuously sculpts this space of heaven and earth. Try observing it as such. And so, I've written all the directions on here for easier calculation. Think of these vertices. We get eight vertices from this shape. Therefore, without having to artificially devise the eight trigrams, they are already engraved within our bodies. Look, I also have six sides, right? Since I am three-dimensional, of course. Front and back, left and right, and above and below. The eight trigrams are already encapsulated in anything that is three-dimensional, one for every vertex. Now let's try calculating the coordinates for the vertices. In the I Ching, from top to bottom, the order is heaven, man and earth. So let's represent this vertex in that order. Heaven is plus, man is plus, earth is plus. So we get the Tian trigram. In this way, we can obtain all eight trigrams. This side would be plus, plus, minus. You get the point. It's interesting, isn't it? So all things already naturally have an image of a trigram contained within it. Everything that exists in a three-dimensional space already has an image of a trigram on its own. It's interesting. If orientated this way, this vertex is plus, plus, plus. And this vertex is plus, plus, minus. Plus, plus. But on the Earth axis, minus. So as you can see, everything already has an image of a trigram. Each axis has a plus and minus, a yin and yang. So within the statement, the universe consists of three things, heaven, earth and man. Also contains the fact that the universe can be represented by the number six, since each of the three has its own yin and yang. And furthermore, it can also be represented by the eight trigrams. Now this is the fun in studying numbers. For now, I will keep talking more on the number six. So there's yin and yang for x, yin and yang for y, and yin and yang for z. Thus, heaven, earth and man each also have yin and yang. Then what does this become? We get the hexagrams from I Ching. If you just understand the philosophy of numbers, you also already understand I Ching. Now, why does I Ching always calculate with six lines? In I Ching, these two are heaven, these two are man, and these two are earth. Also, they count from the bottom. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Then the odd numbers are yang and the even numbers are yin. So within the hexagrams of I Ching already contains the information of heaven, earth, man, and the corresponding yin and yang for each. Therefore, in the Shuo Zhuan of I Ching, it says, the way of earth is hardness and softness. Since earth is tangible, yang manifests as hardness and yin manifests as softness. The yin and yang of heaven become yin and yang itself. Yin contracts while yang expands. Lastly, the yin and yang of man become love and justice. As such, the book explains how each of heaven, earth and man contains the way of yin and yang. Then the person who initially said this must have already had the image of these principles of numbers. Heaven, earth and man each contain yin and yang. This is the information that is stored in the number six. The people who were able to see this fact were the ones who did philosophy with it. So, in conclusion, when heaven, earth and man are each split into two, we get the hexagram. Thank you.